Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and I am here at Roots Tech with another amazing guest who you may recognize from one of the interviews from last year. If I could have you introduce yourself again to everybody. Uh, my name is Johnny Pearl, and I am the founder of DNAPainter.com. Now, DNA Painter is something that I have covered a lot in my videos, and it's probably one of the best websites out there, one of the... Is it? Well, in my opinion, yeah, I think it's one of the best websites. It really takes things to a new level. But um, can you tell people who don't know what DNA Painter, uh, what it is and, and sure. how they can use it? I will try and do that as succinctly as I can. <laughs> so it's a, it's a website uh, which you can go on to try and uh, analyze your DNA results in a bit more detail. Uh, let, let this be clear, in as much detail as you want to. Uh, you might just have a mystery match and you might wonder how close you are related to them. You can use probabilities to figure out how far you might have to go back to find that common ancestor. You can also do a beautiful visualization of your tree uh, and you can overlay uh, DNA inheritance paths onto that, share that with your DNA matches. And finally, you can do chromosome mapping, uh, which is the process of mapping segments of DNA to your ancestors, which probably means nothing to you unless you've tried it, but there is a video about it on my homepage. Now, there's been a lot of new updates over the past year. Uh, at Last Roots Tech, you announced the family trees that you already rolled out, which I love, especially the fan chart. Uh, for anyone who has a family that has known pedigree collapse, you can look at the fan chart and actually see the pedigree collapse when you hover over that line. Yeah, that's a nice feature. Yeah, but can you tell us about some of the more recent features, such as the clustering and the genetic uh, markers? I can indeed. So if we start with the clusters, uh, it's obvious to me that clustering is a very powerful and important tool for any uh, genealogist. Uh, as it happens, I didn't really have the appetite to build any kind of clustering software myself uh, because, um, well, other people have done it for me and their, their stuff is great. So you can now actually cluster your matches natively at GEDmatch and MyHeritage. And there are also a few other companies who can help you do it. So there's DNA GEDcom, uh, there's Genetic Affairs, and there's also something called Shared Clustering by a guy called Jonathan uh, Breacher, is it? And that just works for ancestry clusters, so I don't work with his stuff because I don't have the segments. But for the other stuff, uh, I thought to myself, well, maybe it'd be interesting to see, given we've got the segments, what would that tell us about the clusters? Because clusters are a little bit confusing. Uh, people see a beautiful kind of matrix of squares and they think, well, that all makes it very clear. And then they think, wait a minute, what, what does this even mean? Uh, clustering, in essence, is, is auto-clustering, is, is a, a computer program looking in the shared matches for lots of people and then building them into clusters. And in an ideal world, each of those colored kind of sets of people might be one ancestor, but in reality, it's never going to be like that. They're going to be people who are interrelated on one line, probably, but they might be related to you another way altogether. And I did a lecture in Belfast last week, and I said, who's done clustering? And most people put their hands up. And I said, who feels like they really understand the clusters? And kind of three professionals in the front row put their hands up. I think it is confusing. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if the cluster auto paint is going to make it more confusing or less confusing. To be honest, I built it because I knew the data was there and I've got good relationships with the other developers making these tools, so they were able to put the segments into their data to make it as user-friendly as possible for users. So, yeah, it's, it's a fun feature, but then one of the other recent features, which I love, I mean, I'm a redhead, I have blue eyes, so, you know, always wanted to figure out where it came from but the genetic markers and where yes. you inherited those. So since I built the site, uh, I've had a steady stream of people saying, well, why don't you put these in there? And to be honest, the reason I didn't put them in there is because I didn't really totally understand the genetics behind it, and I didn't want to make a fool of myself. Uh, so I actually hired someone to work with to help me with it. I mean, I was reasonably up to speed, but I wanted to kind of get it down. So I, I worked with a lady called Christy Jacobson, uh, who was great. Uh, and she is a geneticist and was able to um, work with me to identify a kind of core set of traits to play with. Now obviously there's no, there are traits for dangerous medical conditions. I did not put those into DNA Painter because I don't want to terrify people. You might just glance at the page and see the word Alzheimer's and assume that means that they're going to get it. Because obviously yeah. all I would ever be saying to you is that this is where the marker for Alzheimer's is. I wouldn't be saying I wouldn't know what your value is, so I wouldn't know if you were a risk for that or not, but I'm going to avoid that altogether. Yeah. I just look at things like red hair, freckles, curly the fun hair, stuff. earwax, uh, what yeah. else have we got there? Blood type, that's yeah, fun. Blood type, uh, yeah. I, it's a few things, really it's a first step in that direction, because I know 
A, the science is moving forward all the time and there'll be more and more things we can figure out, and B, people want this. So hopefully it makes Chrome's and mapping more accessible. Wonderful. Now, I have a lot of tutorials on my own channel for anyone who wants to learn more, but there's a lot of tutorials all over the place. Can you talk a little bit about where people can go if they want sure. to learn more? Uh, well, first of all, I've got a one-hour webinar about chromosome mapping, which I did on uh, familytreewebinars.com last year, and that's been quite popular. I think it explains it all reasonably well for that side of it. Uh, I'm going to be doing another one of those in June on What Are the Odds, which is a a very popular uh, tool for finding unknown people within a known tree. Yeah. Uh, and Blaine Bettinger has also done a very popular video on chromosome mapping. I think he actually did it more than two years ago now. So yeah. the site's changed a bit, but the principles still apply. And obviously Blaine has a very neat way of explaining things. And that's also linked, it's a YouTube video, but it's linked on the homepage of my site. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for talking to me again my today. My pleasure. Great to see you and, again this uh, year, John. Yeah, we'll be seeing you again next year, I'm sure. We'll see. All right. Good thank work. you, Johnny. Thank you.